In this video, we will learn how to use the hardware timer interrupts of ESP32 in MicroPython. Timer, in essence, is basically a counter that either counts up or counts down. Timer can be used to trigger an event when an overflow happened or a certain count value is reached. Let's see a basic example of using hardware timer that triggers every 2 seconds. First, let's import the machine module. Timer class is a member of machine module. Now, let's create an LED object which is connected to machine.pin GPIO2 and let's set the pin direction to machine.pin.out. Now, let's create the timer object. Let's call it team0 and let's connect it to machine.timer0. ESP32 has four timers we can use, namely timer0 to timer3. To set up or initialize our timer0 object, Let's call timer0.init and its parameters as follows. Period to 2000 which is equivalent to 2 seconds which means that the timer will trigger an interrupt every 2000 milliseconds. Now let's set the mode and let's use the periodic constant of the timer class which is mode is equal to machine dot timer dot periodic periodic mode means that the timer will trigger a timer interrupt every time the set period is reached another option is the one shot one shot mode will trigger a timer interrupt only once when the set period is reached. Next is the callback. Which is a function that handles the timer interrupt. For now, let's use the lambda function. Which is equal to lambda. T. And I want the LED that value to toggle. So, let's use LED value, not LED that value. Lambda function will take timer t instance as an input parameter of the timer. And we just toggle whatever the current value of the LED. Let's save it. as t008 underscore ex01 let's call it simple timer dot pi let's hit the run button and as you may observe the onboard LED on GPIO2 is now blinking or toggling every 2 seconds. Let's try the one-shot mode by modifying this one to one-shot. Let's save this one. Let's stop. And hit run. And as you may observe, it toggles whatever the state of the LED. Then the program exits because one shot mode triggers only once. Let's try again. Now the LED is on. I will hit again the run button. It should turn off the LED. 
Okay? Next, if you want to use a function instead of lambda, let's copy and paste this. And let's comment out this line, 7. Now let's change the callback to handle callback. And let's create our own function here, handle callback, which will take a timer instance inside the function let's toggle the LED which is LED that value is not LED that value and let's change this one to periodic Let's change this also, the period, to let's say 500 milliseconds so that we can see that the blinking more faster. Let's save this one. Hit run. And as you can see, the onboard LED is now blinking every 500 milliseconds. We can change the period more, let's say to... 50 milliseconds let's save this one and run the current script and as you can see our onboard LED is blinking much faster another application of timer is creating multiple time threaded tasks or some other call it multitasking but in this example we will not do multitasking. What we are going to do is dividing the major task to a smaller minor task. I have here an ESP32 with two servo motors. I also use an external power supply module for the servo motors. The big servo motors, the MG996R, is connected to GPIO 23 while the small servo motors the SG90 is connected to GPIO 22 I also prepare here the source code we begin by importing the machine module which includes the timer class then we create a normal GPIO for GPIO 23 and GPIO 22. Next, we create the servo object and we attach the PWM driver to the GPIO pin because we want to PWM control the rotation of the servo motor. Then we initialize the servo object with 20 milliseconds pulse interval and set the angle to zero degree then we create a timer object for both servo motor let's call it team B and team S or timer for the big servo and timer for the small servo and we use the timer 0 and timer 1 then we create a function that will handle the timer callbacks which are handle team B and handle team S it basically takes the is timer B and set the value to true when the period is reached here we initialize the timer objects to 100 milliseconds with a periodic mode and a callback that will handle the timer interrupt. We have here a global variables 
and we use the our previous map function which is similar to Arduino map function which basically we will use to convert the angle which are from 0 to 180 to the duty value that we need for the PWM. In our main loop, we just check if the timer interrupt sets the global variable is team B or is team S. If it's true, we set it to false so that it will not execute again. Then, we rotate the servo motor according to the angle. If the current angle is less than 180 degrees, we increment it by 5. It is similar to steam S or for the small servo motor. Let's run this one and let's see how it works. So it basically run at the same time. I will move this a little bit. What if I want the big servo to rotate every 200 milliseconds, which is a little slower, versus the small servo? Let's try this one. And let's run. And as you can see, our small servo finish first than the big servo. If you want a period like this, so that the big servo is, is lower, but let's increment its angle by 10. Let's save and let's run. It should run or it should finish at the same time. One more. Okay. That's all for now. If you have any question regarding this tutorial, you may write your inquiry in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do subscribe now. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details and references such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good days ahead. See you in the next video.